You'd never think that something as terrible would happen to someone like her. A young life taken too soon. A community mourns the loss of one of its own in a tragic accident. And the link between Kent State and downtown Kent is complete. Find out what it means for downtown businesses. Fall is in the air with cooler temperatures to stick around throughout the week. This is Portage County's only truly local newscast. This is Portage County's TV2 News. Tragedy strikes in Ravenna Township Sunday, taking the life of a teenage girl. Good evening, Kent State and all of Portage County. I'm Caitlin LeBeau. And I'm Jason Gostero. Let's get straight to that story. 15 and a half year old Sierra Thornton was driving her father and four sisters Sunday night, but they never made it out of the neighborhood. The teenager died and her family is in the hospital after a tragic accident on South Prospect Street. That's right. The family was just a few hundred yards away from their home when a train struck the driver's side of their vehicle. TV2's Gabriel Kramer spoke with local police and friends of the family. Gabriel. Thank you, Caitlin. A very sad day in Ravenna mourning the loss for a single father a father of five young girls and lost his oldest when a train hit their family car. Oh my God. 911, where's your emergency? Um, it's the phone call a little sister should never have to make. Um, we, my, our car just got hit by a train and it like slipped over. Okay, where? That's the voice of Sierra Thornton's little sister, moments after a train struck her family's car. And in fear for her family's safety, Sierra died at the scene. I didn't believe it at first. Yeah, it was like hard to accept. A number of Ravenna students came to the railroad crossing to pay their respects. Uh, she was just, yeah, she was really nice and she had a lot of friends and she was a really good person and you'd never think that something this terrible would happen to someone like her. At about six o'clock Sunday night, the Thornton family was leaving home. The oldest sister, 15 and a half year old Sierra, was behind the wheel, but they never made it out of the neighborhood. Right behind me are the railroad tracks where the accident did occur last night, right off of Prospect Street, which is right behind me. Now you can see a stop sign and a railroad crossing sign, but no additional warnings if a train were to come. But last night, Sierra's dad did say that he did hear the train coming, and Sierra just panicked and stalled on the tracks as the train came by. Sierra had only driven about three times with her learner's permit. The accident is still under investigation by the Portage County Sheriff's Office. But Sheriff David Doak said the collision threw the car about 75 feet and the vehicle had to be cut open to release passengers. The dad um, was able to get one of the children out of the vehicle and um, was trying to get Sierra out of the vehicle. Um, but there's no way that he could have got her out of there with the damage that was to the vehicle. Sierra's father was taken to Robinson Memorial Hospital with minor injuries and her four sisters were taken to Akron Children's Hospital. Ravenna High School added a message to its electronic sign today saying, quote, Dear Sierra, you will always be in our hearts and dearly missed. A vigil is scheduled Monday night at the Ravenna First Church of the Nazarene on Brady Lake Road. Thank you, Gabriel. Neighbors say trains come through the area frequently and a loud horn goes off when the train crosses. Still, many railroad crossings are lacking safety protections that can help prevent these accidents. Adv advocacy groups like Angels on the Track say there are many factors that could cause railroad crossing accidents, some of which could have contributed to Sunday's tragedy. That's right. These are just some factors that can result in accidents, a lack of gates, Sight obstructions such as tress and tall vegetation, road alignment with tracks, and driver behavior. For continuous updates on this story, find us on Twitter at TV2KSU. Today is the deadline to register to vote for November's election. Voter registration forms are available online or at other designated agencies. But will students be punching their ballots in the election? TV2's Tyler Carey joins us now with the answer. Tyler? Thank you, Jason. Believe it or not, there is an election this year. But with the absence of constant campaign ads and remarks about the 47%, KSU students just don't seem to have the same amount of interest when it comes to going to the polls. Local elections are just as important because all together they kind of make the national election. But I think it'd be more important if it was a presidential election. Yeah, most people aren't voting. I didn't see, I didn't even know if I was going to vote or not. I mean, I usually try and vote every Probably not, because it's not local for me. I mean, 
if I got a place of my own around here, I probably would, but seeing as how I'm going back home every weekend, uh, probably not. Here are some of the issues that Portage County residents will vote for this year. No statewide initiatives this year. The big thing, a slight income tax raise for Kent residents for a new police facility. Some mixed reaction on that. One girl I talked to didn't think that police needed a new facility. Uh, city mayor and members of city councils, that's something that happens every, every election. And Kent and Streetsboro Sunday liquor sales is another issue that could raise some debate. There were several state measures that did not make it on this year's ballot, including ones involving same-sex marriage, medical marijuana, labor unions, and abortion. For TV2 News, I'm Tyler Carey. Well, residents will need to find a new way around Cherry Street beginning today. The road at Kent South End will be closed at Pine Street. It will be closed for five days due to storm sewer construction. Drivers found a welcome sight at the gas pumps this morning as gas dipped just below the $3 mark in three area locations. Gas was priced at $2.99 a gallon at the locations you see here. The statewide average has fallen 11 cents since last week and 54 cents less than a year ago. Keeping you informed and ahead of the storm, this is your TV2 weather. Good evening, Portage County. Welcome to fall. It was back in the air today. These chilly temperatures, no more summer like 80 degrees. So today you felt the chill in the air. The mid to upper 50s all throughout the state and 160 degrees in Sandusky. So you will feel more of fall. Looking closer into Kent, 56 degrees today. We still had that sunshine out. A little bit of rain here and there this morning that we did deal with, but overall it was a gorgeous day. Felt like 53 degrees, 69% humidity. So it was a really nice day to be walking around campus. Looking at our local radar, you will see how clear it was throughout the day and just a little bit of the moisture that we did deal with earlier today that pushed out through our area and a little bit more that might have a chance of coming through our area tonight. So we will keep a close watch on that. But looking ahead into what we have later on this week, we are going to see more fall like temperatures coming up later this week and also dry sunshine throughout the week. So no more rain for the rest of the week until the end of it and a full by full 70 forecast coming up later on. Back to you, Caitlin, Jason. All right, thank you, Candace. The partial government shutdown is now in its sixth day, and neither side appears to be blinking. House Speaker John Boehner said there are not enough votes in the House to pass a clean spending bill to end the shutdown, as some are saying. President Obama today urged Congress to end the shutdown. The truth of the matter is there are enough Republican and Democratic votes in the House of Representatives right now to end the shutdown immediately with no partisan strings attached. The House should hold that vote today. If Republicans and Speaker Banner are saying there are not enough votes, then they should prove it. Let the bill go to the floor and let's see what happens. Despite the government shutdown, some federal workers are headed back to work. About 400 Northeast Ohio employees at a Youngstown Air Base are returning to work under orders from the Pentagon. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel ordered nearly 350,000 people back to work, citing the Pay Our Military Act. More than 8,000 workers have been sent home because of the shutdown. Over the weekend, the United States conducted two raids in Africa in search of two high-value terrorist targets with two different results. American forces snatched Abu Anas Alibi in the Libyan capital Saturday morning in a successful mission. Alibi was wanted for the 1998 bombings of two U.S. embassies in Africa and was captured in under a minute. But in Somalia, a plan to catch a terrorist commander of an Al-Qaeda-linked group didn't go as planned. Navy SEALs came under fire in a raid and had to when it became clear they couldn't take the, t the target alive. Secretary of State John Kerry reacted to the American attacks. He is a key Al-Qaeda figure. And he is a legal and an appropriate target for the U.S. military under the authorization of the use of military force passed in September of 2001. And, of course, we regularly consult with uh, 
our friends in the region. We consult regularly with the Libyan government. Coming up on TV2 News, find out what the opening of the Esplanade extension means to downtown businesses. And Candace Monticelli gives us her full look at the week ahead. That and more when TV2 News returns. Once you post your image online, you can't take it back. Anyone can see it. Family, friends, anyone. Remember, think before you post. Most of us take what we eat for granted, not giving it a second thought. Hi, I'm Dr. Oz. For the three million American children who have food allergies, food is a very serious matter and can even be life-threatening. Potentially fatal reaction can happen unexpectedly, whether in the classroom, on the playground, or in the cafeteria. Until there's a cure, it's crucial we learn how to respect every bite. To learn more, contact FAN at 800-929-4040 or visit foodallergy.org, a public service from FAN. You realize that 49 million Americans struggle with hunger? That's one out of every six Americans. These people are around us every day. They're our friends, they're our coworkers, their kids go to school with our kids. Sometimes we're not even aware that they're struggling. This problem is closer than you think. But so is the solution. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. There is also a very attractive extended warranty option that includes free service and parts for the next five years. But there's no need for you to get that. You failed to get the test you needed at the doctor that would have detected disease early enough where it could have been treated. So you won't be around in two years to see him grow up which means the warranty would be useless. Okay, sign here, please. For a list of tests every man should have, go to ahrq.gov. This is TV2 News. You're looking at a picture of downtown earlier today. What a beautiful sight and what a great song. Right, absolutely, and we will have later on in the newscast how these businesses you're seeing right here are benefiting from the new Esplanade opening. Conflict erupted in Egypt Sunday between protesters and security forces, leaving 51 people dead and over 260 injured. The violence began early Sunday afternoon as citizens marched in protest of the government. Thousands of protesters were blocked by government security that led to violence. State media reports deaths occurred in a number of cities. And in Mexico, a monster truck spun out of control with fatal results. The monster truck ran over spectators at an event in northern Mexico, killing at least eight people, including four children. It's possible the driver was impaired before the crash. Another 28 people were hospitalized, 12 of whom are in critical condition. The community celebrated the partnership between Kent State University and the city of Kent Friday at the grand opening of the University Esplanade, which was dedicated to Kent State President Lester Lefton. More than 100 community members gathered at the Arts near Main and Willow Streets Friday to celebrate the grand opening of the University Esplanade. The best is yet to come. This is just the beginning of a new century of progress for this city, for this university. Since 2007, Kent State spent more than $10 million acquiring 40 properties between Lincoln Street and Haymaker Parkway to build the extension that now connects the university to downtown Kent. And although the city has no local cash tied into the extension project, Kent City Manager Dave Ruler says the walkway has already boosted business downtown. This is the kind of thing that makes for a vibrant city. People, livability, walkability, it's just uh, exactly what we always hope for. Construction began on the 1,000 foot extension in July 2012. Since its completion in August, Kent City Engineer Jim Bowling says the extension has been critical to downtown's growth. None of uh, the downtown improvements would have happened without the connection to the university. Um, it, it's the avenue that provides a route for 25,000 
students to come downtown and visit and spend time and live and play. And according to Bowling, more time spent is more money made. We'll see that in increased sales taxes and income taxes as the jobs stay and grow in the downtown. And it, it'll, multi, it'll grow tenfold over the time, the lifetime of that project. The path was built around the economic development that's transformed Kent. That transformation came after a public-private $130 million investment between the university, the city, and private businesses sparked downtown's development. People saw the vision of what we were going to do here. They decided to be a part of that new story of Kent, the next chapter, so uh, it's worth every penny. Raven Brinson, TV2 News. Esplanade is considered a vital connection to Parta's new Kent Central Gateway. Multimodal Transit Center, private developments from Acorn Alley, and Fairmount Properties. And of course, the new Kent State University Hotel and Conference Center. Property owners in Portage County have a new incentive to keep up with the condition of their properties. A grant of more than $800,000 has been issued to the county to tear down derelict houses. Those targeted will be contacted by local officials and they can either fix up their property or have it torn down. The demolition list originally had 100 places, but it's already down to 70. And Ravenna residents may need to start popping some corn soon. A proposal has been sent to build a movie theater where the old Ravenna High School once was. If approved, the $7.2 million project would bring 25 jobs to the area and would open in the spring of 2015. Ravenna has not had a movie theater in more than 30 years. And a visionary group is looking for your opinions on the future of Northeast Ohio. Vibrant Neo will be holding a series this month to review and gather ideas on what the area will look like in 30 years. They will be using the input to create a draft of the Vibrant Neo 2040 vision. A session will be held October 15th at the Parta Kent Central Gateway. And downtown looks beautiful, but what's even more beautiful is the weather we've been having. Oh, it's Absolutely. fantastic. Sun is shining, the rain has gone out. We're going to have great fall temperatures. Looking forward to this week. Homecoming was pretty nice, so hopefully it yeah, continues. Exactly. It will be continuing right into this week. And we will see today in Kent, it was pleasant outside, 56 degrees. It felt like 53 to degrees today. The humidity, 69 degrees, so it wasn't too bad walking around. We did have some storms earlier throughout the day, but those led right out and gave us sunshine all day long. So taking a look at our local radar, you will see how we were clear throughout the day with this moisture pulling out of our area, but some still lingering coming into us tonight. So we will have a little bit of chance to see some showers this evening, but nothing to concern yourself about with. Looking forward, on into the next week, we will be seeing still those fall temperatures staying with us and going right into our surface maps. You are going to see how this week is going to stay consistent all week long. So we'll be seeing these temperatures stay in that fall region as this high pressure continues to move down with us and just keep those temperatures calm and the same all week long. Going right into tonight, we are going to have 47 degrees, partly cloudy, with still that 20% chance of rain showers. So something to be aware of, nothing too drastic to ruin your plans this evening. Tomorrow, the sun is back with us, 65 degrees, a low of 46 and sunny all day long. And that's just going to continue right into this week. So jumping right into our 7 day, you're going to see sunshine after sunshine after sunshine, which I absolutely love to see. Fall is finally in the air. So here we go. Tuesday again, sunny and 65, 67 degrees, three days in a row. Wednesday, partly cloudy, partly sunny on Thursday. Friday, sunny as well. Just to start off this gorgeous weekend, we are about to have Saturday, partly cloudy, 69 degrees. Sunny, mostly cloudy skies, 66. And going right into Monday, our first chance of storms, thunderstorms, about a 40% chance Monday. So it's going to be a fantastic week, sunshine all week long. Back to you, Jason and Caitlin. Thank you, Candace. The last of five Cleveland Bridge bombers was sentenced Monday. Joshua Stafford was sentenced to 10 years in jail and a lifetime supervised release. The judge ruled his case deserves a terrorism enhancement and involved weapons of mass destruction. The other defendants all pleaded guilty and received sentences of six to 11 and a half years. And a law brought to the Ohio House could soon have repeat sex offenders facing the death penalty. Representative John Becker said House Bill 244 could allow capital punishment for heinous crimes against children. 
15 states currently allow the death penalty for crimes other than murder. Becker wants Ohio to be a leader on this issue in hopes that other states will follow. Testimony began today in the $100 million fraud case against Bobby Thompson, who allegedly gathered money posing as a veteran's charity. The first witness to take the stand was retired reporter Jeff Testerman. Testerman told jurors that he couldn't reach people identified by Thompson's charity and began Thompson could face 40 years in prison if convicted. Coming up in sports, I take a look at Kent State's homecoming loss and the rest of the weekend action for the Golden Flashes. Stay tuned. Here at Parta, our number one priority is your safety. We want to make sure that when you ride Parta, you get to your destination safely. You can help us by letting us know if something is out of the ordinary, like if someone is acting suspicious. Or if there's an unattended bag or package, let the driver know and we'll take it from there. By keeping alert, we can make the ride safer for all of us. For several years now, interest rates have been historically low. If you've been waiting, perhaps now is the time to make your move. Our team of mortgage specialists will be with you every step of the way from application to closing. At Portage Community Bank, we provide you with the information you need to make the decision to refinance, remodel, or purchase a new home. Give us a call. You'll get the same neighborly service we give all our customers. Portage Community Bank is neighbors serving neighbors. Tuesday on TV2 This Morning. Coming up on TV2 This Morning, Alex Valverde has a full recap of Homecoming 2013, the sights, the sounds, and of course the crowns. That and more tomorrow on TV2 This Morning. We are amazed by weather. We love to figure out what's headed our way to keep you ahead of the storm. All while showing you the nature and beauty that is truly Portage County. Sweetheart, can I give you a hand? No thanks, Dad. I got it. Okay. I'm gonna go fix the lamp in your room. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. And now, your PortageTrailCentral.com sports report. Welcome back to TV2 News. I'm Daniel Black. Kent State's football team faced off against Jordan Lynch and the Northern Huskies for the homecoming game. But the Flashes just couldn't apply the brakes to the Northern Illinois running game. Here's a look at Saturday's game. Stingley started things off, and NIU is going to kick it off right to who other than Dree Archer. And you know what? Dree Archer couldn't be held back by even the rain. He's going to run it. 30, 20, 10, 100 yard kick return for Archer. There he goes, Archer style. But Jordan Lynch is gonna connect to De Dewan Brown, who's gonna run it right back to the Husky end zone. Back and forth action, reared into Dree Archer. Again, can't keep his hands off the ball. He's gonna run it back for an end zone. Handing it off, here you go Huskies. Dree Archer was named Special Teams Player of the Week with his 100-yard kick return, longest in Kent State history, tying Norman Warren in for back in 79. So only two in the Kent State history. Archer also had his 31st and 32nd career touchdown, 80 receiving yards. That man was on fire for the game against the Huskies. And Kent State field hockey team hosted Northwestern. Sunday and the Wildcats, well, they couldn't be tamed. They led 2 0 into the half, but Kent State's Madison Thompson came back with the only score for the Flashes, who fell 3 1 for the Wildcats. Closing out homecoming weekend, the volleyball team hosted Miami, and the Flashes quickly shut down the Red Hawks. Kent never trailed in the first set, remained in control during the second set when Miami tried to tie things up. But after a back and forth action in the third set, the Flashes sent the Miami Hawks packing. Kent State serves up action again this Thursday when they host Ohio in the MAC Center. You know what, Caitlin? It was a little wet for homecoming weekend, but it was great to see the alumni back in Dick right, Stadium. Right. It wasn't that bad, and it seemed like despite a little bit of rainy weather that people were still enjoying the game just fine. It was. It was great to see, you know, 
a little a little downpour can't keep us Flashes fans away. All right. Well, thank you, Danielle. Well, Miley stole the show again. See how coming up next after the break. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Two seconds. Hang on, just stand still. Stand still. One second. Go, go, go. Nice. Boys, hang on, boys. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. My name is Fernanda. I'm the wife of a teacher. Budget cuts affected my husband's salary, so I'm picking up some part-time work. We're doing everything we can to make sure our kids eat today. Tomorrow, I just don't know. Fernanda, how'd I do? Well, I usually fold the underwear first. I meant the acting, but good to know. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Tommy's a really good kid. He's really helpful around the house. He loves to play with his friends. He loves school, too. He's real smart. My Tommy would never e even think about trying alcohol. Isn't that right, sweetie? Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% tried by the eighth grade. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. Stocks all down again today. We're seeing that a lot lately. The Dow down 136 points. NASDAQ down almost 40 points. S&P 500 down almost 15 points. Really seeing that debt ceiling deadlock starting to rattle those investors. Well, she said she can't stop, and she didn't stop. You see what I did there? Oh, I like <laughs> Miley Cyrus is back in the headlines after she hit the SNL stage this weekend as both the host and the musical guest. The pop star had the last laugh when she took jabs at her own VMA's performance, and, of course, the show was not short of government shutdown jokes. That's right. The cast mocked the House Republicans in a parody of We Can't Stop with Miley playing Michelle Bachman alongside Taryn Killam playing Speaker John Boehner. So at least it seems like everybody enjoyed this episode. She was able to laugh at herself without causing too much controversy, like the VMAs, right? It was good to see her be able to host, sing, and, you know, put on a good show for the New York. Right. Still wasn't as good as Hannah Montana. There's Still no doubt not? about that. Oh, always going to be his favorite. But that's just my <laughs> opinion. I watch every episode every night before I go to bed. You heard it here. <laughs> that is our report for this Monday night. For Up to the Minute News, check us out on Twitter at TV2KSU. Be sure to tune in tonight at 9 p.m. for an episode of Sports Corner. I'm Jason Castillo. And I'm Caitlin LeBeau. Have a great night. Jimmy can't sing, and Tommy can't dance, so we're going to put some ants in their pants. Aww. Kids will spend 22 minutes watching us, the super duper party troopers, sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they've got ants in their pants, they've got ants in their pants. In their pants. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Mm. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection, they need you.
Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner please. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are.